All right, let's put our understanding of differentials to work by doing some error estimation problems. We're going to do two meaty problems. The first one involves numerical approximations and no, 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 no. Calculators, calculators allowed. allowed. We're going a little crazy here. What is the approximate value of 15 divided by 4.9 times pi times cosine of 3 in radians? No calculators. What are you going to do? Are you, are you going to say, I, I don't know. <laughs> Where's my calculator? OK, consider the following function of three variables. f of x, y, and z is 15 divided by x times y times z. You can see the relationship to what we're trying to compute. And with a little bit of implicit differentiation, I want you to work out and check that df is negative 15 over xyz times quantity dx over x plus dy over y plus dz over z. Go check that, and then let's do some estimation. I'm going to say that if x is 5, that's a nice value, then that 4.9 in the denominator differs from that by negative 0.1. Likewise, for that pi term, I'm going to say, oh, you know what? Let's let y be equal to 3 and dy be equal to 0 0.14159265. Let's just call it 0.14. This last one, the z value, we're going to have to think a little bit harder because I need to estimate cosine of 3. I know what cosine of pi is. That's negative 1. Let's call that z. Cosine of 3 is cosine of pi minus 0 0.14 and some other stuff. Let's uh, use our knowledge of the Taylor series of cosine about pi to say that this is really negative 1 plus 1 half times 0.14 squared. 0.14 squared, that's like 0.02 something, something, something. Divide by 2, that's 0.01. Uh, negative 1 plus 0.01, that's minus 0.99. That means my dz term is going to be approximately 0.01. Now, this isn't exact, but look, we're approximating. This is going to be fine. Now, insert all these values into the differential expression that we got. And we will estimate 15 over 4.9 pi cosine 3 as being roughly 15 divided by x times y times z, 5 times 3 times negative 1, plus that same thing times quantity dx over x plus dy over y plus dz over z. That is minus 0 0.1 over 5 plus 0 0.14 over 3 plus 0 0.01 over negative 1. Now, even without calculators, we can do all of this stuff by hand. The uh, 15 divided by uh, 15 times negative 1, that's a negative 1. And then minus 0.1 divided by 5 is minus 0.02. And 0.14 divided by 3, that's roughly 0 0.047. And then 0 0.01 divided by negative 1 is minus 0 0.01. Add those together add that negative 1, I get negative 0 0.983. That's our estimate. What's the truth? The truth, according to the calculator, is minus 0 0.94 other stuff. This was good to the first two digits after the decimal point. That's really, that's really great, given that we did a bunch of estimates along the way that only held two digits of accuracy. That's not bad for doing things by hand. Very nice. Very nice. OK, here's another example having to do with, uh, with tolerances in a more architectural setting. Let's say that I have a couple of uh, beams, pieces of wood, that are fastened together, and I want to estimate lengths based on tolerances. OK, so I've got a base beam of length A and a rafter of length B. They are joined together at an angle theta and held up by a strut of length L, capital L. Now, let's say that I know the base beam length, A, is 24 inches. The rafter length, B, is 30 inches. They're at an angle of 57 degrees. But these are only good up to certain tolerances. I know A up to an eighth of an inch. I know B up to a quarter of an inch. And I know theta up to one degree. The question is, what is the length of the strut, L, and how good is our estimate. How confident is our estimate? What's the tolerance on 
that. So let's use the law of cosines to relate all these terms together. You might have to go look that up. But that's L squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine theta. Now, given that, I'm going to estimate L. And here, I really am going to use a, a calculator. And I'm going to say, oh, plug that in. L is approximately 26.3 inches. That's that's our length L. But the question is, how good is that? I only know A, B, and theta up to certain tolerances. So I only know uh, A up to an eighth of an inch. That means D, A is bounded above by one eighth. I know B up to a quarter of an inch. So D, B is less than a quarter and D, theta is less than one degree. Oh, hey, let's convert that to radians. Okay. Implicitly differentiate the law of cosines. I get LDL equals a bunch of other stuff. Solve for DL, and I'm going to get DL equals quantity A minus B cosine theta times DA plus quantity B minus A cosine theta times DB minus A times B times sine theta times D theta, all of that divided by L. Okay, that's the part I wanted to get to. That's the part I want you to be able to get to using some differentiation and differentials. The rest is a little bit messy because what we have to do is insert those upper bounds for the tolerances, fiddle around with the signs, and maximize DL in order to get an upper bound, a tolerance on that L. If you do it the right way, what you will get is that DL is bounded by about a half an inch, just a little bit more. Now, there's a lot of work for you to do to get that result. I'm gonna leave it to you. It's good practice doing some error management. What we're going to see next is a slightly different way to go about it that deals with percentage errors as opposed to absolute errors like we've been doing now.